All right, everybody. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon, The Blackest Heart, and The Lonesome Crown, all published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, we are going to be reviewing The Green Mile by Stephen King. That's right. Let me tell you something. If you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know that I work at the Utah State Prison. I've worked in the uh, mental health unit. I've worked in the gang unit. I've worked in the intake unit. I used to run all of the prison libraries. And now I currently teach life skills to the inmates, you know, anger management, relationships, world history. I teach it all, sometimes even creative writing. At the Utah State Prison, though, again, I'm start, the reason there's a reason I'm starting out this video with the Utah State Prison specifically, because when the original miniseries of The Stand was filmed, it was filmed right here in Utah, and all the prison stuff was filmed out at the Utah State Prison. Stephen King even came to the Utah State Prison and took a tour of it. Some of you on my Instagram have even seen the uh, booking photo that the prison guards back in that, I think it was 1991 or something, the prison bar guards did a booking photo of Stephen King in the Utah State Prison. And I got a photograph of that booking photo that I put up on my Instagram. It's pretty cool. Um, and uh, I, it's too bad I can't show it to you. I don't know how to edit these videos very well, so otherwise I'd just flash it up on a screen. But you'll just have to go to my Instagram and find it. Scroll through a thousand photos and find it. But it's there. Anyway, what I was going to say was uh, while Stephen King was at our Utah State Prison, what we've got at the Utah State Prison is this hallway. And it is a very, 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 very long corridor. Very long corridor. When I first started at the prison, it was painted this weird puke green color. And it was the main corridor. I mean, we're talking a long, long corridor just grotesque green and that was the same color that it was when Stephen King visited rumor is that he got the idea for the green mile from that god-awful green corridor that's at the Utah State Prison because that corridor led clear down to our um, old execution chambers and so um, that's that's the rumor. I don't know whether it's true or not, but, you know, that's what we like to believe, and that's what we like to tell ourselves at the Utah State Prison. Could be true, because a few years later, the Green Mile is when he wrote, I mean, he wrote the Green Mile just right after that. This came out in 1996. We always discuss the covers, right? We always discuss the covers. I got the hardcover here, and the paperback version. The hardcover... Is pretty cool. It's got, I mean, I like the hardcover. The paperback version is kind of, kind of lame. So as far as covers, I think we're going to give the nod to the hardcover as opposed to the paperback. But we'll just put them right here for now. Well, maybe I'll just hold this one. I don't want to hold it. I'll throw it over there. Um, so the covers, yeah. Another thing that I do is I... Listen to the audible.com versions of these books. I've been reviewing every Stephen King novel on my channel in order of publication. We're to the Green Mile now. I've also been listening to the audible.com versions of all of these books. However, I gotta say, I didn't listen to the audible.com version of the Green Mile. I've, I know I failed you all, so I can't review the audible version. I just reread it. I just reread it, and uh, in a reread, so I did this. So no audible, audible review today. This is this came out. If you remember when it originally came out, it came out as a serialized novel. It came out in like eight parts, and each part was only just like maybe fifty pages long. And they published one every couple months for about a year, and people were collecting them one at a time. And then once all of them were out, they published the whole novel as its single entity. I will admit, as they were publishing them in those little tiny, tiny books, I did not buy them. I'm usually the first person to buy Stephen King stuff. 
no matter what format it is. I have to admit, I was a bit annoyed by the little chunks of things. I don't know why, because I kind of wish I had them now. I kind of wish I had a full set and a nice set, but I didn't. I failed myself back in the day because once I read The Green Mile for the first time, I was blown away because it became one of my favorite, one of my five top favorite Stephen King novels of all time. Whenever anyone asks me what Stephen King novel should I start with, I don't really read Stephen King, I don't know if I'm going to like horror, I always tell them start with The Green Mile because it's got a couple things. It's a good thriller. It's quintessential Stephen King horror, and it's got a great story about prison guards. And here's the thing. I've been prison guard, and there's gallows humor in prison guards. I mean, let's just talk. I mean, prison guards do not hold back with their grotesque, morbid, inappropriate jokes and humor. And I like The Green Mile because Stephen King gets prison guards. He understands prison guards just from the opening couple of scenes. And a few, I mean, he, he knows what prison guards are like. He must have talked to some, all of that. So I give him, because I've always wanted to write my own prison story. I mean, I'm a novelist. I write fantasy books, but I've always wanted to write my own prison story. And every time I reread The Shawshank Redemption or The Green Mile, I get discouraged because I'm like, Stephen King already did it. Stephen King already understands the lifestyle that's going on in prison. He gets it pretty damn accurate, whereas most people don't. Orange is the New Black, that's a crappy prison. That's not real prison. That show Oz, not real prison. Pri the show Prison Break, fucking way stupid. I mean, it's like, no, but Stephen King actually sorts of gets how things actually do go down in prisons. So I got to applaud him for that. I One of the reasons I recommend this book is because of the, of the if you want to know what, because people love reading, people love to read about other people's jobs it's weird but you you put a you just set a book a, you, you put out a book about a guy going to pl different plumbing appointments people would read that you put out a book about a guy a carpet cleaner going out to different carpet cleaning appointments people would read it you put a book out about how someone does accounting people oddly enough people read that stuff people like to understand what other jobs are like and this green mile lets you really see what life as a prison guard really is like and so you get that on top of a great supernatural horror story, which the supernatural horror story is they work on death row. You know, our main character, um, Paul Edgecombe, he's a death row prison guard. He, he, deal, he lives there on the unit with all the guys that are on death row. And there's a very eclectic group of inmates that live here, and that is the that is the dynamic part of the story is just all of the different inmates interacting with all the different prison guards and it's realistic i know i've been there i've done that i know how this is and stephen king captures it very well in the green mile and he also captures it fairly well in the shawshank redemption although i think the shawshank redemption is a little more fantasized the green mile is a little more realistic in its depiction of prison life John Coffey is another one of our main characters, and he is one of the inmates on death row. He's like this six foot eight, enormously muscle bound black guy who is accused of murdering and raping two young girls. Um, and then we've got the other prisoners, and we've even got a mouse, Mr. Jingles, who lives there. And I will tell you, that is true. There are mice in the. There's mice in the Utah State Prison, and there's there's sometimes cats and kittens and ducks and raccoons and foxes and all sorts of other things wander through, and they actually get in. I don't, I mean, it's just mine, but sometimes I, I, I was on the intake unit, which, and now granted, we did leave the back door of the intake unit open with a big fan. It was in the middle of the summer to bring, and I, I heard, I'm in my office and I hear kittens. And I walk out and there's a line of kittens walking. And, you know, it's just we had to herd those cats out. I mean, because the inmates would, I mean, the inmates would take care of them. The inmates would, they would love to have pets. In fact, at our prison, we have the, um, the puppy raising thing where, where the inmates raise the puppies for, uh, as uh, mental health uh, help animals. And so it's a great, I mean, 
The safest place for any animal is actually inside the prison. Because the inmates will baby that animal. I mean, they any animal that they come, they just cherish having it around. And uh, so the, that's what I'm talking about, is the realistic stuff in this book was when Mr. Jingles, the mouse, and the inmates take care of it. That is an actual, that actually does happen. And so... And, and then, and then, and, and then, like I said, I teach the creative writing classes. I teach the life skills classes, and you get to know the inmates on a personal kind of level. And and they and, and, and they're not they become you know. There's a lot of prison, and that's the thing. Another thing that Stephen King gets accurate about this is there's prison guards that are just straight assholes, and we've got Percy in this novel who's just a straight asshole and treats the prisoners like they're scum. And, the, and, and there's, you, you, there's that dynamic too, where there's a lot of people that work in the prison that just think the inmates are scum. And then there's others like me that really want to try to help them rehabilitate themselves and, and move back out into society. And so when you're teaching these inmates like world history or life skills and you get to sit with them in a class and hear their stories and hear them talk back and forth about really, really difficult issues, you really get to know, you really get to see the humanity behind the crime, you know, behind the criminals, even though a lot of them have done horrible things and made bad mistakes, you still get to see them as human beings. And, and that's why one of the reasons I don't like cancel culture is because we're canceling people out here over the stupidest things. We're ruining people's lives over because we don't agree with them politically. So let's cancel them. And I and I sit there and I'm like, if I can sit in a classroom full of people who have committed the worst crimes imaginable, if I can sit there and try to teach them to be better, and if I can do that, why the fuck are we canceling people over tweets? It's absolutely asinine. Off my soapbox. The story is Coffee is on death row. Our main prison guards have to deal with this. And that's the horror of the situation is they're putting people to death. Over and over and over. That is their job is to execute criminals. And it's got to take its toll on these men. And it's got to take, and it takes a toll on the other inmates. I mean, we've had executions at the Utah State Prison, and it shuts the prison down for a couple weeks. The media flocks in, everybody's, I mean, we have firing squad executions. I've been there for them. And it's a, it's a media circus, and you can feel the tension in the air of all the inmates because they know that one of, the, one of their own is going to be shot by the state. And it's... I've been there, I've done that. I like saying Stephen King does such a great job of capturing all of those feelings in this supernatural thriller of a horror novel. And that's the magic of Stephen King. Is he can take stuff like that and create a story with characters that you care about, both prison guards and inmates and all of that, and he can make you fall in love with the story, fall in love with the characters, and shed a tear at the end. Which is what's going to happen to you when you read The Green Mile. And, you know, but most of you probably already read it or seen the movie. So you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Let me tell you just one final story <laughs> from the prison. And that is me and uh, one of my good friends that worked at the prison. For a time, we would, uh, we was, this was back when we were on graveyard shift in the mental health unit. And most of our graveyard shift, we didn't have anything to do. So we would sit around and read and read books. And so we read a lot of books back in the day on graveyard shift. And every book we would read, whether it was a Michael Connolly book, a, a Tad Williams book, a John Grisham book, no matter what, if there was a scene set in a prison, inevitably the prison guards would be the stupidest people in the book. George R.R. R. Martin, even in the Game of Thrones, the turnkeys that run the dungeons in all of the, are the dumbest motherfuckers in the book, right? And so we were starting to collect quotes from famous authors like the John Grisham prison quotes, the, Steve, the Stephen King prison, the George R.R. R. Martin prison, where any time a prison guard was mentioned, and then the horrible description of what a 
dipshit that prison guard was and how lazy and stupid and the dregs of society. So we have this whole list of uh, prison guard quotes that were all negative, all negative. I mean, yeah, anytime you got a prison guard in a story, you got to be, you got to be the dumbest fucker in a story, bar none. <laughs> but we found it quite amusing and we had our wall of shame of prison quotes from famous authors. Anyway, what do I give the Green Mile? Well, I, I've if you've seen my top five Stephen King books of all time, you know this is on my top five. This is a 10 out of 10, folks. This book is this book is crazy good. I can't recommend it enough. And you know, at the end of all my Stephen King videos, every book that I've written, I dedicate to Stephen King, Motley Crue, and the Oakland Raiders, Las Vegas Raiders. Because those are the three most important things to me when I was a kid, so they always get a shout-out in every Stephen King video. There we go to Green Mile.